Liverpool fan in Japan. Hello, YouTube. Liverpool fan in Japan. The Miyazaki Man Sai here, and today we're going to go through Ipswich versus Liverpool in the Premier League, the opening day fixture. And we're going to go through the tactical analysis because this is a channel with substance and abundance. The cream of the crop. We're going to go through the 101 of tactics, what Ipswich are looking to do, what Liverpool will line up with for the first team lineup of the season, the overall score, the overall tactics, the transition. And I brought my old favourite tactics board that I use for Lucha FC as player coach. So let's get into it. Just before we do, I'm going to be live streaming a watch along of Ipswich vs Liverpool tomorrow. Please join me. I'm going to set it up very, very shortly. Please come and watch along with the Miyazaki Man Sai. Look at the Japanese players on display on the U Next app that I'm going to be watching it on. We've got Tomiyasu, Haaland, Endo, Mitoma and Watkins. There's only one player here that's not Japanese. And it's Tomiyasu because he looks kind of Taiwanese. He's a bit too googly for Japanese, right? Okay, I digress. Let's get into it. Okay, so we have the new format here. I'm pretty certain the Ipswich will go with their classic. Four, two, three, one formation, as they did in the championship. They are without Nathan Broadhead, Harry Clark and George Hurst. They have injuries in their squad. Thankfully, for the first time in a long time, Liverpool are injury-free. We did have players coming back from the Euro 2024, late like Cody Gakpo, Darwin Nunes, however we have a clean slate and we don't have any sick notes. Thiago Alcantara has retired and gone back to Barcelona, I wish him the best. Ibu Kanate is fit for now as is Joe Gomez, as is Diogo Jota, so we have a clean injury slate front and it's all gravy baby and speaking of gravy, Graven Birch, the game adorable right there. So Arna Slot has the full repertoire of options to pick from and people are saying Pressure, Premier League, unpredictability, how with Liverpool's players cope with Arneslot's tactics? If preseason anything to go by, one of the reasons why they chose Arneslot is for continuity, continuing on from Klopp's pressing style and just adding his own flair. There hasn't been huge turnover in the squad, so the relationships are all there. Ipswich play with a pressing front-footed approach. Every single player will do their job. They'll go out wide, they'll press from the front. He will go in and around to support that striker. The two in the midfield will hold and keep it tight. They have the box on the slot as well. And on defensive transition, it becomes more compact. And you even see one of the defensive midfielders drop into centre-back slot. The number 10 going alongside him. And this being a Rome presser with a heart with a half court press as well. So Ipswich will make it difficult, but in front of the home fans, they will press high up, but when Liverpool enter their attacking third, they will drop deep, keep it tight as you would expect, and engage with Liverpool when they get to the channels. These kind of areas here is where they want to contain Liverpool, looking for Liverpool to cross the ball, in which case they clear, and then they break out. Now the one to look out for is Leif Davis at this situation here, because he joins into the midfield, into the fulcrum with the two, and when the chance presents itself, he will dash into the space to make the overlapping runs. And Connor Chaplin, the number 10, is a roaming number 10 and he will be a danger man as well. He'll be looking to pick up the spaces in and around the half positions like a Salah, like a Lucho Diaz, but he will start more centrally. And Ben Johnson will add some dynamic attributes on the right-hand side. He won't press as far as the left-hand side, but you'd expect him to cover that half area with the lap, a target man, holding the ball up and working in tandem with Chaplin to build off the attack. So it'll be a classic Heskey and Owen combination running in behind, making runs off the target man, but they do like to build up from the back as well. So Liverpool's high press could work a treat. Ipswich are slightly low on numbers. Their whole squad isn't filled with an abundance of top quality players because they've just come up and they're making do with what they have with some reinforcements like the lap from Man City. Omari Hutchison from Chelsea as well has made his move permanent. And you'll know Axel Twanzebi from Manchester United as well. Shored at the back. Now, how did Liverpool counter this? And who do I think will be starting for Arna Slot's first ever official Liverpool FC match? Not every manager has won their opening matches. In fact, I think majority of the, of the previous Liverpool managers have either drawn their match with Tottenham, for example. Rafa Benitez, Gibral Cisse, equaliser against Tottenham. I think Jermaine Defoe opening and scoring. So the onus will be on Arna Slot to have a great start to the season. And I think Ipswich is the perfect opportunity because they will like to be brave in front of their home fans and build up from the back, as I said. So where can Liverpool get in and amongst them? So obviously, let's start at the back line. I'm going to leave the technical formation for Ipswich for now. Obviously, our main man, Brazilian, Alisson Becker. I know Mamash Duvili is linked, but he starts in goal. He's got a big badge, big can badge from Japan right there with the spiky hair. The Brazilian Messiah is in goal and he will sweep up at the back and hopefully keep a clean sheet. Now, a lot of predictions have predicted that 
Ipswich are likely to nick one in front of the home crowd. And I can see 3-1 being a popular score. However, I do not think it will be 3-1 because marshalled alongside Alison Becker, starting at right back, it's the battle between Connor Bradley and Trent Alexander-Arnold. But for seniority and what Trent can do and unlocking the opposition and for that calibre of high-class player, Trent Alexander-Arnold starts at a right back position. Okay, starts at a right back position. He's got to be careful because the left winger will come inside, tuck inside as number 10 as well. Alongside Chaplin with a left back bombing on. So he will be outnumbered at times. So the right midfielder, the right eight has to do a job to protect him as well as the defensive midfielder as well. But for what he offers, his attacking attributes, Trent Alexander-Arnold starts at right back. Alongside Virgil van Dijk, who we know is an absolute banker, the captain, captain extraordinaire. I've got him in my fantasy football team because I think his headed goal scoring prowess will be on full show this season. He looks up for it. He wants to lead by example, lead from the front. It could be his last season. I hope not. I think he will sign a new contract because I think Arnstock will do well. But who goes in this slot here? The options are Joe Gomez, Jarrell Kwanzaa, and Ibu Kanate. Now, Ibu Kanate and Van Dijk have seniority international caps experience but Ibu Kanate is still coming back into form he didn't really play in Euro 2024 recovering from illness and a little bit of injury as well he predominantly would start in the majority of the matches for his physicality but Jarrell Kwanzaa has shown the attributes to be great at passing out from the back great awareness great with his foot on the ball ability and propensity to dribble out from the back a la Matip as well and Joe Gomez he was the centre-back in a title-winning season alongside Van Dijk and has never put a foot wrong. Steady, eddy, reliable. But I'm of the opinion that Joe Gomez is super valuable as an option off the bench as he can cover the whole back line effectively. Pseudo as a Trent, tucking inside as a left-back, solid, covering the inverted wing at the left-back and as a centre-back, reliable as well. I think for this particular match and from what he's shown in pre-season and to give him a vote of confidence it's going to be Konate or Kwanzaa but for now I might change my mind in the duration of this video I'm putting Jarrell Kwanzaa in there now what a show of faith but it's his ability his ability to take the ball out from the back and pass the ball through the lines with a bit of composure I think Kwanzaa has the mindset as a starter and it's probably his place to lose and he'll be rotated with Konate as per different game requirements. So I'm going to stick Kwanzaa in there for now. And he's got to be on his game as well, helping Trent Alexander-Arnold and covering for him as well if Arnold actually does bomb down the right-hand side. I do think a component of this game will see Alexander-Arnold in this space here as early clock days with Robertson bombing up and down because when he goes into this position here, playing a quarterback kind of role or in between the defence, that is when you hit the ball over the top or long balls are looking to probe on a trigger point when the ball is hit to McAllister and it comes back to Trent straight away. Off you go over the top for Darwin Nunes, over to Lucho Diaz, that kind of thing as well. But I think for this particular game, you absolutely mercilessly make the pitch as big as possible, play slot ball, work in your twos and make the opposition run and chase shadows. I'm going to remove... The lines for now and the left back Robertson is our top left back our best left back currently at the club people are writing him off because he's getting older and and slower and burned out a bit but however he's still a top tier elite left back who will come back to form and don't don't ever underestimate relationships and leadership qualities intensity and integrity of the player as well Robertson is a mainstay especially behind the scenes as well but for this particular match he's done no wrong he's massively underrated it's the Scouse Greek Kostas Simikas the man of the fashion comes in at left back he's done his chances no harm at all he's got a better left-footed delivery Robertson's very good at the first time left-footed ball ball comes to him and whip it in one touch Simikas is basically Fabio Aurelio-esque on the delivery of a cross he's one of the game winning conditions in the Carabao EFL Cup final last season with the kids with Van Dyke, Simkas on the pitch Endo shielding the back line protecting us from harm Simkas corner Van Dyke. the rest is history in fact they almost did it twice right with one Van Dyke goal ruled out so Simkas will dominate the half space on the left but Simkas is a bit of a baller as well he's better with the ball at his feet than Robertson he's good at rondos Robertson is first choice Simakas is backup second choice and Gomez is an option when you're covering for an inverted winger as well. So that is the back line. Costa Simakas, Virgil van Dijk, Alison Becker, Jarrell Kwanzaa, Trent Alexander-Arnold. Now the midfield, here we go. Number six position. Here we go. This is the position everyone wants. Martin Zubamendi. Is he coming? Will he? Won't he? Has he flip-flopped? Can Real Sociedad meet his contract demands or what they um, promised him in the PowerPoint presentation? Beautiful mountains, by the way. Um, who knows? Yet to be seen. Will we get another player? Marco Verratti linked. No, thank you. Injury note we just got rid of Tarago Alcantara oh, he's a silky player if you want a bit of cashmere and luxury on top then for season 
I still wouldn't like it. Huge, huge wages, like 500k or something uh, ridiculous. He'd still need 300k, which would equal Mo Salah. I don't think so. Now, if this was other clubs, Endo, for me, would start because man marking Chaplin, roaming around the double tens when the left back comes inside here, he can guard for Trent Alexander Arnold as well. But a misconception is that he's been played in the second string in, in preseason. But what you actually find when you're coaching teams, if you are absolutely hell bent on playing the youngsters and a lot of youngsters, you need the experienced heads to get them the ball, to win them the ball, to communicate, to hold the offside line, to bring them through the game. In which case, Van Dyke, Curtis Jones, Watado Endo used on occasion to bring the kids through. I said it when Watado Endo signed, he'll be used to guide the kids through the cup matches, the friendlies, the dead rubbers because you need that steady head and a reliable steady Eddie to give the ball to and Curtis Jones and Endo did the role admirably. It's not because he got relegated or dropped because Arne Slot doesn't rate him. I have no idea why the journalists keep pushing that story. It must be an agenda or they might be paid to do it. If they have inside information, great, but that completely contradicts what Taru Endo's personal vlog where translated it says Arne Slot has full faith in him and has given him instructions for the role this season and he's trying to adapt and learn to that role. He needs to get up to speed with that role but every confidence in him because he's a high caliber player. Japan national team is a fantastic technical team and he's one of the best players in it. He can play here, here and here. Don't believe me? Go watch the international highlights against Spain, against Germany, against Argentina. Okay, so Botardo Endo would be here and in fact he very well may start here, may surprise a few. However, the other two options alongside him are Curtis Jones and Ryan Gravenberch. Now Ryan Jero Gravenberch, not the greatest in terms of winning aerial duels no matter his size not the greatest at off the ball pressing and marking as well but he's so young and he can build that into his game and from a deep position and deep line too he has the proponent propensity to get the ball to pivot to worm his way out of danger probably on the left hand side more than the right hand side play the ball through the lines and drive through the midfield now driving through the midfield is a super important aspect of premier league football because passing is all well and good but they plucked the they block the passing lanes, but you saw against Manchester City, you can't account for an Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain squeezing his way into this position. Now, do you go with Firmino, who's dropping deep to make the space, or Salah, who's an option out wide, or Sadio Mane, who's trying to run in and behind? Well, you can't do anything because Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain's just beaten your press and smashed it in, or Daisy cut it in into the side netting, and the rest is history. So, a pushing midfielder who can get past the lines with physicality, pace and athleticism, that is Graven Birch and Sobersly, is worth the weight in gold. However, I think for this particular match, with the faith in Curtis Jones as well as a baller, as a ball player and how he's been bigging himself up in training as well and receiving the ball. And if you saw Curtis Jones's play against Las Palmas, he is absolutely phenomenal at picking up the ball. He did it for England under 21s as well. When he's further afield, he kind of gets lost in his dribbling mindset, holds onto the ball too long, worms his way into pockets where he finds it hard to get out. But from a deep position, he never loses the ball. He's got a bit more time to get on the ball because when they press high, they leave gaps in behind the line as well. So when they press him high, if you were to press the sixes high, you've got the gap here and the gap here for Jones to worm his way into or pass the ball through the lines. My feeling, my gut feeling, even though people are saying Gravenberch in deep position, it could be Gravenberch, it could be Endo. I think Jones starts there with, where is my Macca, my Ginger Ninja in the right lights? With Alexis McAllister. I think that is probably, probably the lineup. And the reason why is Ipswich will bomb forward, will commit players, will try to play the ball as well. And when McAllister and Jones have the ball off the defence, it's going to be incredibly hard to worm it off them. If Jarrell Quanza plays it into McAllister, the two options that we will see with slot ball is straight away he will ping it into space for Trent Alexander-Arnold to roam or he'll get it back to Van Dijk. Van Dijk will get it to a Curtis Jones. Now if it goes from this angle, McAllister goes into the advanced position and this is why Arne Slot says that his system is a 4-3-3 and not a 4-2-3-1. It's because the second number eight basically plays in the same line as McAllister when the deep line pivot, the tempo maestro picks up the ball. He stays high. There's no point in him staying there because Jarrell Quanza will vacate that gap. it almost be this kind of shape here. Now he could play it to a Sobersly because Arnaslot's system involves pairings, pairings of players together. And in this situation, if he goes here, you'll find very often the player goes here, he'll step alongside him and he'll vacate into this space as well. Because what you're aiming to do is always having an out on both sides as a ping back. Or if the player, their player is committed there, then the ping is here 
and Simicast bombs forwards and beats him because he's facing forward and he's got a, a yard on him to dash into, into space. But I digress a little bit. Let's reset the board. This is a brave pick, but I'm going with Curtis Jones to start the season with Maka in a deep line position. Maka on the right-hand side because in this half space here, he's really effective, really, really effective. He gets the assists and the goals. From the left-hand side, he's got to score a scorcher or a cracker to really make his influence. But from this position, the ball over the top, chopping down Nottingham Forest, it was gravy. Or gravy baby. I'm sorry, Gravin Birch. You're staying there for now. Who's the third midfielder? This. This is the 10. The number 10. The numero 2. The 10. The Jew. Jew means 10 in Japanese, by the way. Not the South Park variant of the Jew. Okay. The choices are Dominic Soboslai, Harvey Elliott, potentially Mo Salah, Ryan Gravin Birch as well to start. I think Soboslai has had a phenomenal preseason working in tandem with Mo Salah and working together. They look absolutely phenomenal. Athleticism, the understanding, the same wavelength, as well as Soboslai being able to cover for Trent Alexander Arnold is invaluable. Harvey Elliott presses. He presses his heart out. He's really enthusiastic. He's integral to the play and he wants to be starting games this season. How do you leave either of these two players out? It's a difficult conundrum unless you put your Dominic Soboslai at the base of the midfield. Wow, that would be a sight to see as well. Maka and Soboslai in the deep double pivot. Who do you go with? Now, in fantasy football, my wild card, my ace is Harvey Elliott because he always always makes a goal impact in terms of chance creation, getting in and around the box, the cute ball to slide someone in, even the assist before the assist, which is not good for me because then I don't get any fantasy football points. He's shooting. He gets a lot more shots off than Dominic Sobersly. He's so cute at getting into this position here and hitting a hard front post shot. That kind of shot, sliding into a runner, a Lucio Diaz or Cody Gakpo to shoot as well. Working with Mo Salah to run in behind into this position, in which case Mo Salah is that position. He can pass it back to him or he can smash it across goal. Harvey Elliott, it'd be a huge show of faith to start him as 10. What would Dominic Sobersly think about that on a bench? Then again, if Dominic Sobersly starts as a 10 with seniority, hungry, captain, great looking Domi Schlobbers as well, then what would Harvey Elliott think? He'd be like, it's Ipswich man, put the faith in me as the number 10. Who has shown more in preseason? Harvey Elliott's looked electric in preseason. Absolutely phenomenal. But Dominic Sobersly always have the athleticism as well to last the game, to run up and down the laterals as well, and to cover for Trent Alexander Arnold. We are against Ipswich. We're going on the front foot. I'm going to make a brave call here. A brave, brave call. And start with Harvey Elliott. Start with Harvey Elliott in the 10. Because one of Jurgen Klopp's biggest regrets, regrets was he didn't play Harvey Elliott enough. You'd expect Liverpool to dominate the possession. Who is the one who's going to unlock the defence with a silky pass for a front line to build their confidence up? It's a Harvey Elliott. Dominic Sobersly, long range shot, driving through the lines as well. Athleticism, power, pace, and covering for Trent Alexander Arnold, great. But I think Arnasot wants goals and he wants the ball. He wants to keep possession and do things with the ball. I think Harvey Elliott is slightly more cultured, whereas Dominic Sobersly is an athletic specimen of a player and an absolute technical marvel with his right foot technique. But Harvey Elliott just has that cuteness, a little bit of cuteness. It'll be interesting to see. Wouldn't be um, disappointed to either one of them. It could very well be Dominic Sobersly. I'm going out on a limb here just because it's fantasy football. I got Harvey Elliott in there. Right winger speaks for itself. Scottish Braveheart, left back on the bench. It's Mo Salah, Egyptian king. Now with Mo Salah and Harvey Elliott, that is one of the reasons why I think they work well together. Left footed, do the same role. In this season, Mo Salah will not be as out wide as he can because he really struggles to beat the man, beat the man, or from deep, beat the man or drive through, right? If he's got space to run into, he's lightning, he's dynamite. But I think you'll find him in this half space 10 position of Mazala, right side of 10 position, more often than not. And you'll see Harvey Elliott being the legs for Mo Salah, rotating in and around and playing him the cute ball or drawing drawing the attention so that a McAllister can play the ball through the lines for Salah to pick up on a half turn, bump it to the left side, Jink in, beat a man, get into his half space here and work his magic. Whether it's outside of the foot, left foot, ball across more centrally or to a number 10. Because in this situation, there's always going to be a tucked in number 10, a double number 10. Arna Slot will have an initial number 10 and a winger playing the other number 10 when the other one is out wide as well. Different than Jurgen Klopp. Horses for courses, both styles are very good. But you're going to see Mo Salah drift into this sort of area a lot more from this wide position than staying there because Jurgen Klopp needed the whip from him 
but he's going to be playmaking. He's going to be playmaking wide forward, and his job is to get his body in and around the edge of the area to have a shot or to slide someone in because his playmaking is phenomenal as well. With these two in tandem and playing close together in this kind of position, it gives Trent Alexander the whole freedom to go up and down, and I think you're going to see Alexander-Arnold in this position a lot more than in the last season and a lot more than in this position because you're starting with a double pivot. If you do go forward and want to do your box, it still works in that position there. And these can rotate as and when needed as well because both of them have the, the prowess to do a job in that position. And then striking options and left wing options. I think you start the season with Diogo Jota the Slaughter because Nunes came in late, still needs to get used to the tactics, adjust with the teammates as well, getting a playmaker closer to him, timing the run, working the patterns of play, understanding what is the action by the player before him, before he makes that darting run. I think he'll be caught offside a lot less this season. He'll get shots on targets, which is good for fantasy football as well. I think Diogo Jota starts because he's looked mesmerizing in preseason. Scored a goal of preseason, scored a goal of the universe in eternity on a dipping volley, Van Basten like into the side of net. Let's hope he keeps some of that for the, the season as well. Diogo Jota starts with a silkworm dribble. He can go either side, but I think very much, very much this season, when Salah gets into this position, he's gonna be sliding Jota in this line, Jota Nunes, and then your players will be darting forward, waiting for the pullback, waiting for the cutback, or if Jota gets it cleaner on the angle, he'll be shooting across goal or trying to smash it in goal, but more likely this shot here. But you'll see this lateral here on the side of the penalty box area from Diogo Jota. Similarly, this run here, because he's very much two-footed and it's a similar kind of concept. He can hit it back, he can dunk it out wide, he can hit it to the roaming eight to recycle. If it's recycled, it'll go square, it'll go square, it'll go square. The patterns of play build up again, and then he'll run, make that straight line run, and then it's the same situation again. I think Fox in the box, working the laterals is the name of the game for Arna Slot. It'll be very, very interesting to see. And left winger is a straight toss-up between Lucho Diaz and Cody Gakpo. But for the fact that Cody Gakpo came back late as well and needs to build a rhythm in the Arna Slot team. And he's been challenged by Arna Slot. He's been called a left winger. He said his best position is left wing. Gakpo will start many games but for this particular game. And I know he's been linked to Barcelona. And some people are just like, ship him off to Barcelona. You must be crazy if you think Barcelona will give us any sort of decent deal for Lucho Diaz at this stage. And Anthony Gordon is still what if. Unless you've actually secured an Anthony Gordon, you can't let the mesmerizing Colombian winger, who was second top scorer in the Primera Divisi at Portugal League for Benfica. No, for Porto. For Porto. His dribbling is top notch. He's hard to stop. He's elite in his work rate. He's always a pest, will always cause trouble. He'll stand a man up. You always know he's going to cut inside here. Stronger right foot, but it's fine because Diego Jota makes that run there. He'll have option to square of Harvey Elliott as well. And Harvey Elliott could make that run, but it's more likely Salah from this from making that run. Harvey Elliott holding out there. Maka being the square option and someone backing up as well. Everyone compressing the pitch to squeeze the pitch in. And from this position, Go on then, Lucho. Shoot. At least get it on target because any spillage, Mo Salah is there to header it in with that afro. In fact, he's bold this season. He's bold. He's mean. He's clean. We're going to do good things. So Lucho Diaz is on that side as well. And Costa Simicas, quality delivery. He will make himself there and there available. But the good thing about Costa Simicas is Robertson will get into this advanced position whereas Costa Simicas from this position, like a Fabio Radio, has a menacing, arching, dipping cross. If you've seen the Greek international in international fixtures... Do that deep, dipping, crossing, darting bore like Trent Alexander-Arnold does on the right-hand side. My goodness, that's an overload. And Jota was massively underrated in the air. He's scary how good he is in the air. It's like Luis Garcia back in the day always scores header. Sadio Mane always scores his header. Berto Firmino as well now and then scores the headers. But Diogo Jota is a beast in the air. And Trent Simicas will deliver the balls to him all day long. Even on the long ball, Salah running in can head it, get a bit of power to it when he's got a, a head of steam and running in as well. So that, for me, is the lineup. No matter how crazy it looks to, in, to initially um, start with, I am of the belief that it's Ipswich. They're at home. They're going to come out. But Arnold Slot wants to wipe them away with the slot machine, arcade, pinball, double duo pairing, Simicas, Curtis Jones, Maka, and Trent Alexander-Arnold, Salah, and Elliot Jota, and Lucho Diaz. The pairings all over the pitch. What you see is a double lateral. So if these two are in this position, which I'll find themselves very often, then these two will be in this position, these two will be in this position, and these two will be in that position. Looks 
sexy, doesn't it? Looks very, very nice. He'll step up, he'll cover as well. Alison Becker, corner, diving header, why not? That is what I believe will happen. Nunes will come on. He will get some minutes as well. Cody Gakpo will come on. Dominic Sovaslai will come on as well. The others, Graven Birch is most likely and Joe Gomez is most likely to come on. But isn't it a refreshing state of play that we have no injuries to contend with? And Ipswich is 4-2-3-1 formation. Really brave coming out as well. But Liverpool in defensive transition. Keep it tight. You have the box in front of the defence. Lucio Diaz is a workhorse. Harvey Elliott is a workhorse. Mo Salah will give his best effort, but I think McAllister will need to cover more. They will work in their triangles there. And Jota will be there for the offensive break. Because any ball over to Jota, you underestimate his diving, heading, through ball, playmaking play ability to head the ball like a thousand miles an hour into a runner on either side. Or to slot it in and he'll do his little silkworm dribble and finish with a plum. My official prediction for the match, I'm going 2-0. I think Liverpool will play some stunning football. The Premier League will stand up on notice. People will finally un uh, understand that the shiny one is here and he's mesmerizing, baby. Now, if you like this analysis, if you like the style of tactical analysis compared to the old version, then let me know in the comments below. This is much easier for me to draw the arrows and to shift the players along and to clear the board as well. Please let me know in the comments below what you think of the tactical analysis. What do you think Arne Slot would do? What do you think what would you do personally as well? Smash a like, really helps this video get seen. I'm trying my best to make content for you. I'm just recovering from the corona cough now. I hope to get to 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. Hopefully average around 3,000 views per video. That would really make my day. All your comments I personally reply to. It's more than just a thanks or a heart emoji. I give you my real thoughts on your comments because I care that we are growing the best community in the world. Join the Discord. We meme, we talk tactics, we talk transfers, we talk lineups, we talk fancy football. I would love to see you on the Discord. I'm hosting giveaway competitions very, very soon there as well. If you want to support the channel, the best way is for YouTube membership as well. I'm a tiny bit behind, but I'm translating Wataru Endo's book, his online vlog series, which has over 100 videos, including his interactions with the backroom staff, the players and the coaching team and Arna Slot as well as other books like Karu Matoma, Ritsu Doan, Keisuke Honda, and even people like I am Zlatan Ibrahimovic. And just for the lols, Paul Merson and whoever as well. I give my opinions on other fan channels, whether they're worth their weight and salt in watching them as well. And overall, I'd just really love to have you on board as a Liverpool fan in Japan member. It's cheaper than a cup of mediocre coffee from Costa or something, so why not give it a go? And you know me, I love my merch. My mate from Instagram got in touch again. And he said, Sai, I love the kit you're showing. You need to have more kit in your collection. And he sent me two brand new goodies. Once again, the bag has arrived. So if you like what you see, you need to check out his website, check out the designs. That's where the Captain Tsubasa Japan shirt came from last time. I'm gonna open up the package now. I'll put the link in the description below and on the screen. He has sent me some Liverpool goodies and I can't wait to see what I have in store. So we have a green goodie and a black goodie and probably a trousers that accompanies the green goodie. So let's have a look at what we got. Expertly packaged as well. So fresh and so clean. And this is none other than the official away kit for Liverpool. Black looks good on the body. It's got the turquoise green trim and turquoise is my favorite color. Justice for the 97 Nike LFC collaboration M size men's. I've got to get that bad boy on right now. But first, before I do. Nail cutter. Soccer Atos, my man, you are the best. Ho, ho, ho. This could be the best kit of the new season. The third kit is actually really nice as well. I've already got that white one, but look, look at this trim. You feel like a million quid, which is really, really cheap for a Liverpool player, by the way. But I'm a little bit older than Watari Endo, and he's a little bit more accomplished than me in the six, so I'd take a million quid. Or at least a sponsorship from Primark or something, I don't know. Um, no, I'm betting that. Let's do Nike. Okay, yes, looky, 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 looky. 
I really like this. Thank you, my friend. He provided this kit for me and I am delighted. This is amazing. It feels comfortable. The turquoise green, the trim is really nice. The cut is really nice, really breathable as well. I can do a lot of videos with this. And saying that, make sure you watch my live stream, by the way. I'm live streaming the Ipswich and Liverpool match tomorrow, giving all my tactical analysis and banter as I go along. But thank you so much for this. And to top it off, I've never even seen this before, but look at this. This looks like a trackie of the same turquoise color. With the embroidered Liverpool Axa badge. I mean, whew, look at that. It's literally worth starting the channel just to get this piece of kit. I love it. Look at that. That is beautiful. And look at the cut on the back as well. That is fantastic. I would be super proud to wear that when I go pick up the Mushroom Boy Ace at kindergarten. Look at that. Whew. Cold Palmer. No, Trent. Trent Bappe. And I'm assuming this is the complement to the bottoms as well. And there we go. The Nike LFC bottoms, fine and divine. I like me some quality derriere. I do my squats. I never miss leg day. So that will suit me just nicely. So thank you so much, Soccer Atos, my man. Check out his website for quality designs. Until next time, Miyazaki man, Ichiban. It means the best. Until next time, Jane means ciao.